Ms. Pelitzer, it's a pleasure to have you here with us at the Atlantic Dialogues. Um, you, your former government official, Argentinian government official, I, I think you must be very excited for what's coming. Congratulations for, for the qualification in the final. I, ho I hope we Moroccans come and join you uh, today. Um, you've been you've been advisor uh, uh, in at the government level in Argentina, and you've been involved uh, with gender issues at an international level, uh, especially at the G20 level. Uh, you have extensive experience uh, in uh, linking international relations, international development, and gender, and how to advocate for gender uh, in the international stage. Uh, so my my question is is more like of a context. Uh, about Latin America, we've seen recent developments in Brazil, in Argentina, in Bolivia, uh, in, in almost all parts of um, of uh, Latin America. I, I would like to ask you, as an Argentinian, how do you interpret this uh, this recent uh, social uproar? Well, thank you, yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, there were several initiatives that has been taken on gender mainstreaming at global level, and in the uh, G20 2018. Uh, G20 leaders uh, summit in Buenos Aires. It was the first time that the gender mainstreaming was taken to the uh, to the leaders level. That was our contribution as government to the global agenda. Mm -hmm. Since uh, the Beijing declaration, there has been at global level a call for action in the gender mainstreaming agenda, yeah. and that was our contribution. Mm -hmm. But also, it was a way to convey these demands that the people that has taken to the streets in yes. Argentina, as you yes. may know, the New Namenos movement was born in Argentina in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 15, sorry. And uh, at that time, in, when the G20 was taking place and Argentina was holding the presidency, yeah. uh, there was the first time that the abortion bill was discussing in government. Oh. Yes, so uh, I think that the key is that Nowadays, uh, now one can avoid the gender mainstreaming agenda, no yes. locally or globally. Yeah, yeah the, the thing is, what you're saying is that the, the national uproars uh, on gender, on abortion law, on, more, on, on, on this, this big push from the people for more social justice, it cannot be avoided. And it doesn't stay only on the national level. It always spans and it always expands and it's almost unstoppable. And at the government level and in, in the international community, uh, we, we can't fight to stop it. We rather have to fight to, to solve the issues and, and, and understand the issues. So I know that um, you've been involved with the G20. And uh, I, I've talked to the, about the G20 today, and we've talked extensively about the G20 and how uh, the G20 can be more inclusive of African uh, nations. Uh, but with you, I want to say how the G20 can be more inclusive of social issues and gender issues. I know you've been involved with, with um, um, implementing this gender agenda within the G20. Uh, I would love if you could tell us uh, more about it. Yes, well, thank you. Yes, it, it, it was a big step towards the gender mainstreaming, yeah. as I mentioned globally. But I think that in Latin America, we have a, a huge experience in, in um, addressing this agenda, as I mentioned before. And I want to mention that uh, specifically this kind of activities that the one that we are attending today, yeah. it's a key to work towards that agenda sure. because yes we cannot we can exchange our our uh, policies we can exchange what we are doing in our regions yeah. i think that latin america and africa has a lot of common yes Co uh, common issues, issues uh, common mentalities and uh, above all we have the key to solve those challenges those common challenges yes. that the global south has so we have to work together that's why uh, I came here the, for the first time in 2019 as an adult alumni, as an adult to the adult yes. program. Yes. And uh, that exchange, it was very enriching for me. Yeah. And I think that uh, we are working together with some yes. other alumni to get this strong message yes. that gender mainstreaming cannot be avoided. Yeah. That gender mainstreaming, uh, it's it's a, a depth in some places, but it's also constructing and building something. Yeah, it's it's working and activism on the ground. Yes, of course, but it's also important to have the political will yeah. to her the half of the population that we are. Yeah. So, so you, you talk a lot about gender, gender mainstreaming. Yes. What do you really mean about that? Oh, well, great question. It's 
uh, that you have to include the gender perspective in all areas at all levels. You don't need to have, a, I don't know, a panel, for instance, uh, yeah. only on gender perspective, but you have to think about public policies and economic policies with a gender perspective, uh, politics um, with gender perspective, in yes. all areas. You have to have a perspective, not just for the women, but just for gender in yeah. all areas. Can you give us like um, an example, uh, for instance, with, with Argentina, with your country, or I know that you're involved with the organization of uh, uh, Latin states, of, uh, of Latin American states? The organization of American yeah. states. Can you tell us about uh, how, uh, what work is done within Latin America to implement and, and do this uh, gen gender mainstreaming? Well, yes, I think that, as I mentioned before, it uh, is a cross-cutting issue. You have all, all the areas should be uh, should be analyzed or should be think about with a gender perspective. In yes. this case, nowadays I'm working in an education program and digital education program with, where we have this perspective. Yeah. So we convey some or we build some efforts, especially for girls and, and, and uh, women that yeah. are involved in education because yeah. we know that this intersectionality yes. that it uh, hits most to women yeah. of colors to, to women first, but the women of color, so women from different origins. So we have to put a little bit more effort to 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 reach the quality. Yeah, yeah. oh, for sure. I, I, I get it. And what's what's really interesting is is, is this strong and, and very powerful idea that you're saying gen gender is not only about gender or gender equality. Gender is about health. It's about education. It's about politics. It it spans over all the aspects of uh, the human life and of uh, the politics and governance of, uh, of a country or of an international uh, community. So this is a very powerful idea. And um, uh, I think it, it speaks also about intersectionality, like the fact that we, we shouldn't look at one issue with a specialized way, which should rather uh, intertwine, entangle all the issues if we want to find a viable uh, solution or compromise. So let's, my, my last question or my last two questions are going to be about intersectionality. Uh, I know it's an issue that's been um, academically uh, really uh, um, developing in Latin America. Also in the, in the African continent, we see more and more academia about inter intersectionality, uh, linking gender with, with race, with privilege. Uh, how it plays within the, in, uh, the inequalities of, of a global financial system. Uh, what can we do to, to implement a more uh, uh, proactive policies to, to, to tackle these issues? So um, my, my question is, uh, because you're an adult alumni and you said that you've been uh, enlightened and that the experience of you and Argentinian coming to Marrakesh, uh, seeing uh, uh, other African uh, 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 colleagues, uh, it, it really, brought up so many great ideas and initiatives from your part. So my, my, my question is, how can we do to, um, to build on that? How can we do to implement this intersectionality on a north-south, uh, or rather a south-south cross-Atlantic uh, approach? What type of initiatives, what type of recommendations would you have for us? Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I think the first of all that I want to say is that the Global South has so much to offer and so much that the North has to learn about it. So I think that the, this first step of um, making these spaces of dialogue, of, uh, of um, debating some ideas, yeah. it's crucial. But also it has to have the political will to uh, listen to these uh, suggestions, yeah. to listen to the things that... Political will is like in political will is key, obviously, because... Uh, but it's, it's key, but it's not the only thing that we need. Yeah. We need um, people, common people, yeah. to get involved and yeah. to make the difference. And also, obviously, the public service to, yeah. uh, to take this agenda as proper. It's also about civil society, what... Uh, we're doing here uh, exchange of culture, communities. Yes, of course. And I think, as I mentioned before, we, we have some trends that are the same in our countries, but there are all, all differences. differences. Yeah. So I think that enriches our public policies. Sure. Yes, so that these debates, these spaces are key for growing in that, that conscious of this as an issue, as an important issue that can be avoided, that yeah. you must, if you want 
to have impact in public yeah. policy or have impact in civil society, you should include yeah. this. No, you have to talk about this. And, and we see that in Latin, Latin America, these issues of, uh, of gender, of abortion laws can create social uproars. So the, the, the governments, they need to tackle these issues. They need to think about social justice and social equity and to include this, uh, this idea of gender in all the public policies. And uh, people like you, uh, with the work they're doing, they, they, they bring these uh, this ideas up uh, into the, the political sphere and I think it's really positive and, and we're moving forward uh, towards a more uh, gender equal uh, political landscape. So this is a good thing. But um, my last question for you would be, uh, what would be your conclusions? What would be your recommendations? Like if, if you want to leave our viewers with one idea about, uh, about gender intersectionality, uh, how can we as an international community uh, be more proactive about gender equality? What would you, what would you tell them? Well, um, I think that, as I mentioned before, this is a matter that can be avoided. And as a matter of fact, I think that uh, get involved get involved, yeah. it matters. It matters what you do, it matters yes. what you think, it matters how you include people. And no matter what, uh, our very big uh, challenges, global challenges, doesn't affect equally to all the people. So yeah. women, are, women, we are more affected to those inflation, uh, climate yeah. change. So any, anything you can do and you can help, it, I, I used to, to use that, that phrase that is, did you have another woman today? Think about that. Think about how you could be affected for the, uh, with this problematic yeah. and how, can you, what can you do to improve this equ the, a more equally world? Yeah. And um, the, the last thing I want to say is that the Global South has too much to offer. We have yeah. to work together. We are so far apart, it seems, but yes. we are so close, yeah, indeed. actually. And so we have to make a, to, to believe in the things that we create, in the things that we will, and show the, to the world that we have those solutions. Couldn't agree more. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.